Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to test the difference between percentages or proportions uh, that have, are derived from a within subjects or repeated measures uh, design. And this is a follow-up video from a, another video that I uh, uploaded on the McNamara test, which is a similar which is a statistic you can apply to, to test this hypothesis. But in SPSS, the way SPSS does it, it's much too strict. And you end up not getting significant results when you should be getting either significant results or very nearly significant results. I make reference to a macro that has been created by a person named uh, Marta G uh, Garcia Granaro, which you can actually uh, find on the uh, website that I have, the web page I have devoted to this topic. And um, I'm going to run us through this macro uh, relatively quickly. You don't, it looks complicated. You don't have to know much about it. Uh, first thing I'll do, the, uh, the first thing you need to do to run this macro is you first need to get your frequencies in your 2x2 two two table, uh, much like you would for a Pearson chi-squared 2x2 two two table analysis. Well, you have to get them for this repeated measures design. So you want to analyze descriptives and then go into cross tabs. And I've already got them in there because I just ran the analysis. But um, So you'd put your first variable, your time one variable in there, and your time two variable in your column. In this case here, if you watch the McNamara video, I talk about um, children who cry at night at age one and at age three. And you do not need to actually have uh, the McNamara chi-square statistic clicked on there. I'll, I'll keep that uh, like that. But I will undo... Uh, the rows and, and percentages because we don't need that. All we need is uh, so you would put your two variables in row uh, and columns and statistics uh, McNamara. I don't, you don't even need it but if you want to look at it for out of interest. Well, that's the only thing you need and what you'll get is a table uh, this here your 2 by 2 table and then you get your numbers. So 14 were uh, soothers at age 3 and age 1. All right, and everyone's study is going to be different. What you need are these four numbers in the table, and once you load up the macro, all you have to do is go into File and Open or New Syntax, and that'll open up a new syntax file, and then you copy and paste the section of the macro that I have on the web page. I haven't created it yet, but basically all you're going to have to do is copy and paste from the web page onto uh, your syntax file. All right? And then at the bottom, there's the only thing you have to concern yourself with is not any of this. All that is what executes the program. All you have to do is have the words my McNamara, which are already going to be there, and then the four numbers that correspond to your table. Now in my table, it happens to be 14, 2, 8, and 9, because I based this example on that. So 14, 2, 8, 9 correspond to the numbers from left to right. 14, 2, 8, 9. Your numbers are going to be different, but it goes from left to right, from left to right. And if you put your numbers like that into your syntax file, uh, you are then prepared to run the macro. All you have to do is click on Run and then All. And then SPSS, uh, depending on what your options are, mine options are set so that it actually specifies what it's running. So it runs the whole macro and it puts that in the output file. Uh, most of you will probably only get these two tables and they're important tables. One is you get confidence intervals associated with the differences in the percentages. So in this case, the difference in the percentages uh, are associated uh, I should have actually done that in the, in the descriptives Oh, actually, I probably should, um, whoops, cells, and row and column. So I just redid the first uh, cross-tabs analysis. And what it's doing is it's testing the difference between 51.5 uh, versus 33.3. So the percentage of signalers at age 1, 51.5, that's what it was, 
against the percentage of signalers at age three. So how many were crying at night at age one versus the percentage that cried at night at age three? So it's 51.5 versus 33.3. And in the macro, it's giving me those same numbers. And then the difference, which equals to 18, 51.5 minus 33 equals 18. And then you get the lower bound confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, which is just barely going through zero. Uh, so the upper bound is 34, 35%. So based on the sample of 33, uh, it looks like up to 30, 35% with 95% confidence uh, are crying at night in terms of the difference between time one and time two. And the lower confidence interval is negative 0.63, so just beyond uh, zero. And then it gives us the um, chi-square statistics which SPSS doesn't give you. It just gives you the, um, the significance level. Usually that's what it gives you. And we can see that the uh, corrected, uh, the uncorrected, well, what's called the uncorrected uh, chi-square value is 3.6, and it's equal 0 0.0578, just barely not significant. And then the corrected chi-square value is 2.5, and it's equal to 0 0.1138 significance level. But as I write in the blog that I will write for this, the correction that's being applied here, the correction for continuity, is the Yates correction for continuity, and it's way too conservative. All the research I know of that's examined this show it to be way too conservative, and I think you should probably never use it. You should probably always use the uncorrected. And I'll put references in the blog entry that I have for this statistic, and you can reference those, um, those papers that demonstrated that the Yates correction is too conservative. And so we should be relying on the uncorrected chi-square value. And based on this macro, you get the chi-square value, and you get the uncorrected significance level. With SPSS, you do not. It only gives you the corrected one, usually, almost always, depending on your sample size. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you make great use of uh, Marta's uh, macro that she's um, generously made available on the Internet. Uh, and which I, I'll note, I only changed a few things in it relative to the language. Uh, it was written in Spanish, I believe, and I changed the, the output language to English. But other than that, it's uh, Marta Garcia Granada's uh, macro. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.